Welcome to another GIS Tech Tips video from Sam. In this video, we're going to take a high-level overview of Esri's new ArcGIS Arcade expression language. For those migrating to ArcGIS Pro or maybe using ArcGIS Online or Enterprise, you've probably heard Esri talking about ArcGIS Arcade. So what is Arcade? Why should you spend your valuable time learning it? And these are some great questions, and we'll try to answer them throughout this video. Esri has termed Arcade as an expression language. It is compatible with their newer products in the ArcGIS stack, including ArcGIS Pro, Online, Enterprise, Field Maps, Dashboard, Survey123, and more. Now, for those of us that have been around for a while, you're probably now saying to yourself, great, another Esri proprietary language to learn. As it brings back memories of AML, Avenue, Map Objects, Arc Objects, all of which are now obsolete. So why even bother learning it if it's probably going to do the same thing, go the way of the dodo? Well, <laughs> as we all know, the simple answer is because Esri says so. However, the longer answer will take, a, will take shape as we go through the remainder of this video. As I mentioned, Esri has said that Arcade is an expression language. So you know, what does that mean? How does it differ from other languages like Python or .NET or C Sharp or HTML or PHP and so on? Well, an expression language is lightweight when you compare it to other languages that are scripting or development languages similar to those that I just mentioned. This means it takes a lot less resources to run by comparison. Now, that also means that it has more limitations. For example, Arcade cannot be used to create a standalone application or even an add-on extension. Arcade also works only inside of ArcGIS-based applications. You cannot schedule Arcade expressions or scripts to run outside of ArcGIS like you can do with a Python script, for example. However, when you do run it inside of the ArcGIS environment, it is often faster than things like a Python script. Also, because Arcade was created by Esri, it is compatible with the newer ArcGIS product stack. This means that you can, well, let me rephrase that. This means what you see in one application is what you'll see in others. For example, if I create a label expression with Arcade inside of ArcGIS Pro, and then I publish that map to ArcGIS Online, the labels that I see in Pro are gonna be the same labels that I see in ArcGIS Online, or ArcGIS Enterprise, or Field Maps, and so on. And this wasn't always the case with things like, say, Python. I create a labeling expression in Python, say, in ArcMap, publish that to ArcGIS Online, but I would not always get the same results. And part of this is due to differing versions of Python being used. ArcMap uses one version of Python, ArcGIS Online will use another version of Python, and say ArcGIS Pro, another version as well. So because of that incompatibility or differing versions, we don't always get the same result. Now, with Arcade being an Esri developed language built inside of the ArcGIS platform, we don't get those inconsistencies. We don't get those conflicts. So we see a much more consistent result when we use Arcade inside of the ArcGIS platform, which is really nice if, like a lot of us now, we're crossing into those different applications. We're using Arc Pro to build our maps, do our analysis, and then we're publishing that result to, say, ArcGIS Online, so our management team, our field teams, even the general public can get access to that. And we want to make sure what we create in one is what we see in the other. Now that you have a general understanding of kind of what Arcade is, um, now let's look at some of the things you can do with it. Arcade can be used to do many things in ArcGIS, and its capabilities keep growing with each new version that Esri releases. I'm sure if anybody goes out to the Esri UC, or the user conference, I should say, you'll get to see examples of this. Basic uses of Arcade include labeling. So for example, here, I go into this map that shows the water lines and say I want to label each one of these water lines with, say, its 
pipe size and pipe material, I can use an arcade expression to do that. So if I click on the labeling tab, click the expression button, you can see that I've got a very simple arcade expression in here. And then when I turn on the labels, you can see that it's putting in the pipe size and the pipe material along that line with the pipe material being on one line and the pipe size being on another, right? So that's one use of Arcade. And again, if I were to publish this map to ArcGIS Online, I would see the same results if I were zoomed to the same area in that map in ArcGIS Online. Another thing we can do with Arcade Expressions is control symbology or visualization of features within a map. So let's take a look at that. Here I have a map of Union City, Georgia with census blocks for that area. And what I want to do is symbolize each census block by its population density. Is it got a, a low or a medium or a high density? So I can go and do that by going to a feature layer in symbology, setting it to say unique values, which opens our symbology pane. Again, I'm going to click the expression button over here. I'm going to load an expression that I've already created. So here is a somewhat more complex arcade expression where I've got variables populated and I'm using if and else if statements in here. So you can see where if the population is less than or equal to this number, it's going to return low density. Uh, if it's greater than or equal to this number, and less than or equal to this number, it returns medium density. Uh, and if it's something else, it returns high density. I'm going to go OK. You can see that expression has returned values for my symbology based off of what I put in that expression. And you can see it update on the map here. So now I can very quickly see where my high density areas, my low density, and my medium density areas are using that arcade expression. Now, Arcade can be used to do a lot of other things too. For example, you can customize your pop-up window. So that's the window when I use, or I click in the map, and I click on a feature, this informational window that pops up. I can go in and customize what shows up here within this window using Arcade Expressions. I could introduce or create custom charts or graphs as well. Over time, Esri has been adding more advanced capabilities with Arcade, so you can actually now do analysis or filtering of data, as well as calculating values using functions and equations, again, using Arcade. You can also apply this with attribute rules for data quality improvements. And like I said, Esri just keeps adding more and more to the capabilities of Arcade with each new version of ArcGIS that is released. So now hopefully you have a good understanding of what you can do with Arcade, some of the advantages it has over other things like Python or C Sharp or whatnot um, as far as a, a language goes. But I guess the downside of Arcade is that because it is a programming language, you do have to learn it. And while it's not complicated, it does have its own syntax and its own functions. In general terms, and keep in mind I'm not a programmer or developer, but in general terms the, the syntax or the format of the language for Arcade is not overly complicated. If you've done other programming or coding in the past with HTML or JavaScript or even Python, then you shouldn't have a big issue in picking up how things work inside of Arcade. There is a lot of capability as we've talked about, and you can do things like format text, uh, perform mathematical functions, perform geometry functions, so that if you format this properly or use the right syntax, 
this can be a very powerful tool in your toolbox. Because this is a general high level overview, I don't want to get too far in the weeds with the syntax, but I do want to give you a couple of examples just so you start to get an idea of what we're talking about when we're looking at the syntax for the language arcade. So here is an example of an expression that Kurt converts the area of a polygon to acres using a conversion factor. And then it will round that result to three decimal places. And we'll add the word acres to the end of the result from this expression. The results of this could be a label with a value of 0.172 acres. Uh, again, assuming that the polygon has an area of roughly 696.06 square meters. So with this expression, we're not only converting units, so we're going from square meters to acres, but we're rounding that number and then adding extra text to the end of it in the form of the word acres. So you can look at this expression and kind of get an idea of the syntax involved in performing that type of operation. You can also insert comments into your arcade expression using the double slashes for a single line comment as illustrated here. You can also do multi-line comments by doing hash star and then putting in your comments across multiple lines and then ending that with a star hash. Again, as you can see here in this example, if you coded before, you understand the importance of comments within codes. Uh, again, a simple expression like the one we just talked about with the, the acres, you probably wouldn't need to comment that. But if you're writing a more complex expression, you won't put comments in that code so you can know what's going on. Or if somebody has to come in behind you, they can also know why you did what you did. Why did you choose that methodology? What is this variable supposed to be? Those kind of things. So comments really help explain the underlying code and, and why it's there. So it's important to be able to put those in. Another thing, Arcade also does support the use of variables. These are delineated in the code with the var prefix. You could have something or define a variable where you go var acres equals star, I'm sorry, dollar sign feature dot area slash 43560, as you can see here on the screen. So what I've done is I've defined a variable named acres and then said that uh, variable equals the area of a given feature divided by 43,560, because we're assuming that the area is in square feet, so that's going to give us the acres. Okay. And now if I use, or let me back that up, I can use that variable acres in my code in place of having to put in that conversion factor. Okay. So it makes it a very flexible way of using a value throughout the code without having to type things long and hard and whatnot. Now, it is important to note when you're working with variables inside of Arcade is they are not case sensitive. So when I do all lowercase var acres, that would be the same as defining it with var with an uppercase a acres. As far as Arcade is concerned, those are the, the two things. Acres all lowercase or acres with an uppercase a are the same variable. That's different from other languages like Python, which are case sensitive. So that is something you'll have to get accustomed to. These are just a few examples of Arcade syntax, but as you can hopefully see, the syntax is not overly complicated, even for those that are not very experienced programmers. You should be able to pick it up pretty easily. I know um, I've done a pretty good job with it. And as I mentioned, I'm not a coder by any stretch of any imagination. I can do some Python and I've done HTML and ASP coding in the past, uh, but I, I'm not, it's not what I do all the time. So I think that you, if you're new to this, should be able to pick it up. If you've done coding in the past, you should also be able to pick it up pretty quickly. 
So with that in mind, let's kind of go through it and really highlight some of the pros and cons that we've talked about so far in Arcade. Uh, on the pro side, we have that it's very lightweight and performs fast and effectively. It is a consistent uh, thing across the ArcGIS platform, so you get the same result regardless of what application you're running in. The syntax is fairly simple. It's not overly complicated. And Esri is continuing to develop this as a language and adding greater functionality and capability to it as it matures. Now some cons. You know, I guess the biggest con it is an Esri proprietary language. It only works inside of the ArcGIS application. And even with that, it only works in the newer applications, right? So you can't go back and use Arcade in the older, say, ArcMap or ArcGIS Collector uh, or Arc Catalog or ArcScene or ArcLogue. It only works in the newer versions of the uh, platform. Another con is it cannot be run as a standalone script, which means you can't schedule it so it runs at a certain time on a certain day. And it's also, you know, another language you have to learn. So while the syntax is simple, you know, you still have to learn it. So it's just one more thing you got to take the time to figure out and, and get, you know, under your belt, as it were. With all that, hopefully now you have a better understanding of what Arcade is and what it can do, at least at a very high level. Esri is currently investing a lot into Arcade so that for the foreseeable future, it is something most power users of ArcGIS should at least take a look at and maybe spend some time learning. We hope to publish future videos that cover things like syntax and how to build specific expressions using Arcade in the future. If you did happen to enjoy this video and found it helpful, please make sure to give it a like and leave a comment. If you have not done so already, please subscribe to the channel. And if you want to, hit that notification bell. That way you'll know when new content is published. And best of all, you know, subscribing is free. It doesn't cost you anything, but it sure helps us here at Sam Pro this channel. So with that, folks, thanks for watching. We do appreciate your support, and we'll see you in the next video.